What I understand is that an optimal microbiome is exactly kind of like what you're talking, the, the, the more diverse, the more, um, I've yes. heard like you want to feed your gut or you want to eat, I don't know, like a hundred different kinds of food or something every week or, or, or some, some number like that or 200 because all these different foods, you know, and, and we're talking healthy foods, um, you know, it's going to, it's going to essentially seed a different strain yeah. or, or microbe in the gut. Well, it's really different. I mean, uh, every, every case is really different for us. But yeah, once we get the human, you know, core keystone species there, then you can, you know, have a, a, a liberalized diet. You know, a lot of our clients, they can't eat gluten when they first come to us. Some are even restricted to like four foods on earth. That's it. And they get more and more food allergies, you know, as they proceed, as they cut more and more food out. But usually in just two months or less, our clients are liberalizing even by four or five, six months. We want people to try a little gluten and just see what the reaction is. And usually it's fine. You know? Some wow. will be so impaired, you know, they're in bed for six months if they eat a little drop of gluten when they first initially come to us. They're so gluten intolerant. But even our friends who are like celiac or our clients who are celiac, they, when they go to Europe, sometimes it's no problem eating the, Euro, uh, the European uh, gluten or beer. That's in, that's really interesting, and I've I've so I kind of go back and forth on this kind of European, um, you know, American bread situation. I was talking to somebody about the French paradox, and you know, I from what I understand, I've heard it. The French paradox. It's like this idea that well, how come the French people don't have as many gluten allergies and they don't get fat like you know Americans do? And you know, people say, well, their bread doesn't have as much gluten, and they because they eat a lot of bread. They eat like when I went to France, when I went to Paris, I was just eating baguettes like crazy, and you know, they're like they eat a lot of bread. How come they don't? Yeah have the problems that Americans do. And so I've heard it's the gluten thing, but then I heard this person speak, uh, or I've read, I read this paper called, um, oh, uh, is it iron? I, I think it's called iron misbehaving badly or something like that. And basically the idea is that our bread in America is fortified with, uh, with iron. And, um, and it's not like I, like iron you get from red meat is different from iron. They fortify bread with. And sure. so the, the bread that gets the, fort, the, the iron fortification, it's like literally iron shavings. So a lot of times uh -huh. people believe that, okay, it's the gluten and I'm, I'm all on board because I've read a lot about the, the harms of gluten too. But I wonder if there's any truth to this thing. Like, could it also be these other things in the bread, like the Absolutely. iron fortification, yeah. no, the, the chemicals, yeah. the bleach? Yeah. There's a lot of, yeah, adjuvants that they add or flowing ingredients to make the flour flow. I used to have it. I have a degree in food science. So yeah. And then, um, uh, most wheat and also even our non-gluten sources like non-organic oats, a um, lot of uh, pulses and, uh, you know, uh, you know, our, our storage of different st starches, you know, they're covered in glyphosate because mm -hmm. glyphosate is an herbicide, which is also anti-pest and anti, you know, weevil as well as anti even, um, you know, other pathogens. So, um, but it kills all the good stuff as well too, at least the dysbiosis and all the clinical studies. So yeah, we're, we're kind of fucking ourselves with all kind of processed foods, unfortunately. Eating most na as, as natural and organic and from the earth, farm to table is like really more helpful 